Hello my fellow Halloween fiends, are we ready to do a little bit of Halloween crafting? Today we're going to be making these vintage inspired greeting cards for Halloween. These cards are inspired by actual vintage cards that were given from one person to the other back around the turn of the century up until around the 1930s where the accessibility of telephones became a more convenient way to wish glad Halloween tidings to your friends and family. I did up a sketch the night before and I thought that having a jack lantern front and center would be a perfect way to start off this project. I'm using watercolors for this, which is a fairly new medium to me. I love painting and I used to paint so much. It was kind of like my first love when it came to creativity years and years ago. And I just haven't done it in forever. And I thought that watercolor would be a kind of a fun thing to try to get into. So disclaimer and apologies if I'm not doing the perfect techniques and the way that you're supposed to do things. I think a lot of times with creativity we can get stuck into perfection and just sometimes learning from experience is very valuable and very fun. I'm starting off with this jack lantern doing many different layers of orange. I want to have a lot of depth and dimensionality. I'm referencing a lot of the actual illustrations and pictures of what these cards look like so I can make sure that my style is pretty similar to what they look like and the lettering, the composition, the colors, all that is pretty realistic and similar. Moving on to the moon, I was trying to think about how I can make sure that all of the colors of the composition matched very well, and I thought that actually using the same color of the moon as some of the background and creating this ombre effect with the pale blue night sky would complement everything very nicely. To do this ombre, I made sure that all of the paint was quite wet so it's very easy to mix and have everything flow very nicely. With watercolors, you want to make sure that things dry a considerable amount before you do some layers or else the detail that you add on top is not going to come through. So. I switched to doing the background so that it would have enough time for the pumpkin to dry so I can go and do the carve outs. The eyes, the mouth, and for this I am going to be making it look a little more three dimensional by adding some of the thickness, the inside of the pumpkin that you would see from an angle using a darker orange for that and then using a dark, very, very, very dark brown, almost black. I just want to make sure I didn't use any stark black because I thought that all the colors in this composition are more dull and not as vivid that a stark black would look a little bit too crazy and unfortunately with this little spider web it came out a little darker than I had hoped but whatever it is what it is. Now moving on to the lettering, I have a love affair with lettering. I think it's just so fun and I, I love fonts and all that kind of stuff. I saw that it, there was this dark gold green lettering color that was very common on these cards so I tried to replicate that as best as I could. I also saw that reds and blues were very commonly used also with the text. Also adding a lot of filigree and embellishments around the text. I also thought there's nothing more beautiful than an eerie creepy tree and some bats in the sky. Again I am using a very dark brown for this and doing some layers so that it adds some dimensionality. I 
I played back and forth of whether or not I wanted to do a colored border, but I figured that I actually rather just do the border with the cardstock and then adhere this too. So I'm cutting out my print and then we're going to start putting our card together. So I measured out my card and made sure that I would have enough space around for a border. I am taking just a piece of black cardstock, cutting it out, and then I'm gonna glue down my illustration to it and then cut around a border. Now I'm moving on to the inside in the pop-up section of the card. For this, I wanted to have many different small components that I can cut out and then assemble how I want to create this pop-up effect. For this, I did kind of like an underpainting, but then I ended up wetting it with just water and then using a really, really, really dark brown again. And it creates this bleeding effect, this wet on wet, and it lends it to look a little fluffy and like a little bit like hair. And I thought that would add that soft little texture. I also decided to do a little cauldron boiling, a couple more jack-o'-lanterns, and then another eerie tree. Once all the paintings are dry, I'm going to cut them out. For more detailed sections like the tree branches, I'm actually using an X-Acto knife so that I can make sure to get into all the nooks and crannies. Now I'm taking another sheet of cardstock and I'm going to start creating my pop-up. For this, I'm going to be tracing the exact shape of my card so that I can glue this to the inside. Now, I had already previously thought about the composition that I wanted to have. I wanted to have the tree and the moon ready glued on to the cardstock above the pop-up. So I wanted to make sure that I cut out a section that would allow enough room for the tree to still be able to be glued to the back. So for the pop-up, this is the simplest kind of pop-up you could possibly do, but it adds just a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of visual interest. You're just gonna cut two slits, essentially, the same exact depth. Then you're gonna fold up this piece of cardstock and make sure that it's pressed down pretty well. Now you're going to turn it inside out. This is what it's going to look like on the inside. And so you want to pop out that box and then fold over your cardstock. So now when you open it, you get this little platform, if you will. So now I'm just going to start taping down all of my little elements and playing around with the design to see what tiers I want the different little components to be on. Now all that's left to do is to take my pop-up section and adhere it to the original card. I triple check to make sure that I'm gluing things to the right side and making sure things are pretty aligned to the best of my ability. This isn't that big a deal because you can go in and trim up any bits of unevenness that you see. And 
here we have our vintage inspired Halloween greeting card. Thank you so much for joining me on this Halloween craft. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you feel inspired to do some painting and maybe make one of your own. If you enjoyed this video, I would so appreciate you giving me a like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Now that the chaos of September is over, I have a nice full lineup for October of other fun Halloween things because this is the best time of the year. Anyway, I hope that I catch you in my next video. Until then, I hope you have a lovely day or night wherever you are. Bye.